Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on the physicians and practitioners who are redefining medicine through their integrative, functional, and holistic approach to health and well-being. We are so pleased to speak with Dr. Mark Rosenberg today. Dr. Rosenberg has been involved with drug research since 1991 he has numerous certifications in several different fields of medicine, also psychology and fitness, with particular expertise in the mechanisms of cancer treatment failure. Dr. Rosenberg is also board certified from A4M, and he is the program director for A4M's Integrative Cancer Therapy Fellowship. Wow, welcome Dr. Rosenberg. Thank you. So fighting cancer is obviously a major deal. What inspired you to begin your journey of research with cancer treatment failure? Well, um, my board certification was emergency medicine, and I was running an emergency department, and my mother, my own mother, walked in, and I diagnosed her with metastatic lung cancer to liver, spleen, bilateral adrenal glands, and left hip. Uh, at that time, I didn't know anything about treating cancer uh, over 17 years ago, and I learned that conventional chemotherapy had extended survival for most advanced stage solid tumors by about two months over doing nothing. So that's where my career changed. I, I uh, began studying cancer at that point. Well, of course, I'm your own mother. I mean, having cancer, wow, I'm so sorry. Thank you. How do you recommend to treat DNA mutations? Can you please explain how the company Omicure does this differently than other companies? One of the hottest areas of research and treatment is trying to target actionable mutations. Um, the problem with just targeting DNA mutations is probably only about 20% of individuals benefit. And one of the reasons for that is just because we see a mutation, we don't know if that mutation is actually a driver for the cancer or if it's even being expressed. What Omicure does is they're actually looking at RNA sequencing. So when they sequence the RNA, they can actually see what genes are turned on or being expressed. And what Omicure is doing is they're combining, looking at the RNA expression, and um, with an AI platform, they're looking at different substances, drugs, and even um, sub substances within nutraceuticals that will affect that dysregulation that they're seeing. So uh, certainly Omicure is bringing something new to the table. Okay. And you're definitely addressing that in your lecture at the 30th annual A4M Spring Congress. And you're also addressing uh, the foods that you recommend to inhibit cancer growth. Can you tell us more about the foods that sure. you recommend, please? So, so the, the idea behind this is I'm not going to say which foods inhibit cancer because when we, use, when we look at the RNA expression on, on an individual's cancer, it's going to be different. In other words, we're going to recommend foods that depend on the RNA sequencing. Mm -hmm. So it's not a one-size-fits-all. So mm -hmm. that's what Omicure is doing. They're going, to, they're going to say, based on the dysregulation of your cancer genes, okay. we're going to tell you which foods are best to inhibit cancer growth. Okay, so it's a case-by-case -case basis. Correct. So what research are you working on now, and do you have any patents pending? Yeah, so um, some very interesting things are going on. Um, I started a pharmaceutical company uh, with a drug that I brought to Harvard a, a few years ago, and we actually just went public, and we're starting our first phase one trial, first quarter next year, with a drug that targets cancer stem cells. In addition, uh, I recently filed a, I have a provisional patent. I'm develop, developing a device that will attempt to eliminate all circulating tumor clusters from the bloodstream. If we're successful in this, we can turn the metastatic process, meaning the seeding process of cancer, from a systemic disease into a focal disease. So after filing that patent, um, we, we, uh, we joined forces with the University of Michigan and our first experiment has been started. Wow, that sounds truly amazing. So you're the director of A4M's Integrative Cancer Fellowship. Can you tell us a bit more about that for other sure. doctors who would be interested? Sure, so um, the Integrative Cancer Fellowship, uh, as the name implies, we, we try to integrate uh, many different modalities that have some data behind it. So uh, in the fellowship, we do discuss chemotherapy, 
but we use chemotherapy uh, differently than standard of care. For example, the standard of care is what's called maximum tolerated dose chemotherapy, meaning you use the highest dose that the patient can stand. But there's been a plethora of data over many years showing that doing that uh, not only causes increased toxicity to the patient, but the, the high doses inhibit an, an immune response, uh, so it actually can kill the immune cells, and it also breeds resistant clones. So there is data showing that lowering the dose may be um, actually more effective in the long run. So we discuss using lower dose chemotherapy. We discuss immunotherapy, the new immunotherapy drugs that are out being used uh, again in a, a lower dose. And we also discuss using repurposed drugs. Repurposed drugs is a hot area of research now, meaning using drugs that were meant for other indications can be repurposed for cancer. And certainly, we get into uh, the benefits of exercise and different dietary regimens for cancer, as well as uh, nutraceuticals or supplements. So what types of cancer have we made advances with in the past five or 10 years? Well, that's, that's a good question, Melissa. You know, the, the honest truth is, in the last five or 10 years, um, with regards to overall survival, we really haven't made huge advances. Um, what we've done is, we have developed drugs that generally buy a few more months. Now, there are some exceptions. For example, um, in uh, specific mutations with non-small cell lung cancer, we've come out with drugs that have significantly extended survival. But uh, un unfortunately, um, that is a big problem. Um, we are still looking for the magic bullets to uh, do a much better job with stage four cancers. And, you know, we're kind of inching along rather than getting home runs. So, you know, it's, we're still searching. It seems like early detection would be very helpful. Um, so what are some advances that have been made with detecting cancer? Well, Melissa, that, that's a, a very good point. And, and that's where we really have made some strides. So, you know, when we see an abnormality or we see a, a malignant lesion on a scan, that's actually a late finding. And I say that because it takes approximately one million cancer cells to form a one millimeter lesion. Now, when a radiologist is reading a scan, we don't even comment on a one millimeter lesion. It's so tiny, we don't even know that it's anything. Mm -hmm. But yet that represents, if it's real, it represents one million cancer cells. So wouldn't it be nice to be able to, de to, to, be able to detect cancer before you can see it? And, and that's where we've made our strides. So now there are several companies that are doing tests to look for circulating cell-free tumor DNA in the bloodstream. So what happens is these cancer cells, because they're replicating more quickly than normal cells, some of them will die, and they will release their DNA that gets uh, that, that eventually entravasates into circulation. And now we're able to pick up circulating tumor DNA often before we can even see it on a scan. And in my opinion, that is really one of the greatest uh, modalities that we have developed to detect cancer at an early stage. Yeah, those are some great strides forward. So what can you tell us about cancer stem cells and the efforts to treat cancer stem cells? Uh, another good question. Um, there's argument over what we call a cancer stem cell, but what we can say and what there's no argument over is that cancer stem cells have the ability to self-renew and they are the most resistant cells. Now with our standard treatments, such as chemotherapy and radiation therapy, it's been well demonstrated that these treatments do not kill the cancer stem cells. Unfortunately, there is data suggesting that even when the patient responds, the chemotherapy and radiation therapy can actually stimulate the cancer stem cells to replicate. And that's one of the causes of resistance, and then not only resistance, but the natural selection of a more resistant cancer. And so that is the reason that I started my pharmaceutical company and we joined with a group from Harvard. So we actually will be launching the first human trial. Uh, it's gonna be a basket trial, meaning we're gonna take all different advanced stage or stage four solid tumors and we will be treating with the first drug to actually 
try to kill those cancer stem cells. Amazing. Um, what are some healthy habits that you incorporate into your daily life and you recommend to others as well? Well, it's really the basics. Of course, uh, being lean, the, the smaller the animal within each species, the longer you live. So it's important to be a small animal. So I certainly, um, I calorie restrict. I eat mostly a plant-based diet. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the data on exercise inhibiting and preventing cancer is really profound. And so I, I do believe that it's important to do the basics, uh, meaning exercise daily if possible, eat mostly a plant-based, a relatively calorie-restricted diet. Mm -hmm. So those, are, those, are, those will never change. <laughs> yeah, thank you for those tips. If there's one thing you could be known for, what would that one thing be, whether it be in your medical profession or your personal life? Well, I think you know, my goal before I leave this body, this earth, uh, will be to make a, a, a huge difference in cancer. And I, uh, I'm putting my money on this uh, filtration device to eliminate circulating tumor clusters. Mm -hmm. So that is what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that this is successful and will alleviate the pain and suffering of so many patients with advanced stage cancer. Wow, that's a great answer. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for your insight today. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much. <laughs>